like what he had to say? I do. I love what he had to say. Listen, Amari Cooper isn't a guy isn't a guy we hear from very often. Amari Cooper isn't one of those dudes that continuously ask for the football or who is boisterous throughout the media. But this just shows how much this offense is struggling, right? We got Dak Prescott making bets with the defense to try to get this offense going on who will score more turnovers, who will get more turnovers, or who will score more TDs. And now you have Amari Cooper, a classically, traditionally, historically quiet football player. I mean, the one thing we loved about him was that he was this productive receiver receiver but didn't seem like a diva saying you know what I want to help this offense Dak Prescott being asked about being in a slump Kellen Moore not being the genius offensive coordinator or offensive mind that many thought him to be through the first six weeks of the season like this is not necessarily a crisis because they're winning right and you're in the AFC the NFC East and it's an easy division to win but this was a team we were counting as Super Bowl contenders early on in the season and with the play of their offense with the uh, production from their quarterback with kind of some of the inconsistencies we've seen even with the defense that is constantly improving now becoming one of the better units in football you can't believe in the Dallas Cowboys and it's hard to not think that this will end up where the last quarter century of seasons has ended up for the Dallas Cowboys and that's with them at home or doing appearances at the Super Bowl instead of appearing in the Super Bowl yeah, it's funny. People talk about actions speak louder than words, and I think that's true. Actions do mm -hmm. speak louder than words, but sometimes you got to start speaking up and using your voice, and I love that Amari Cooper right. did that. He was very specific. He said, man, I want to be used in third down. I want to be used in the red zone. We could be more explosive. I could be a huge part of that. He sees it. He knows it. The fans see it. The fans know it. I'm glad he's speaking up and saying it. Remember, a few weeks ago, five, six weeks ago, everyone was clamoring, clamoring and saying, man, the Cowboys got to run the ball more. Got to get back to that six-game stretch. Mm -hmm. They were averaging almost 200 yards rushing. They got to run it. They got to run it. And all of a sudden, the Cowboys started running it more. And all of a sudden, they're not explosive. Cooper's not getting his, his touches. We're seeing that. We're seeing uh, CD not getting as many touches. Right? And I, I get it. People have been injured. And now they're getting back healthy. I understand that. But in order for the Cowboys to be a, a, a team that can win in the playoffs, two things need to happen. Number one, they need to block out the noise. That's not only from the media, but I think it's also from the general manager, a.k.a. the team owner, who's talking about receivers aren't running right routes and we got to run it more. Block out the noise and allow Kellen Moore to be Kellen Moore. We saw in week one, and RC, you and I disagree with this, and we still probably disagree with it now. In week one against Tampa Bay, we saw a team that did not run yeah. the ball in the Cowboys. They threw the ball, and though they yeah. didn't win the game, I thought it was the right game plan. I thought it was the correct game plan against a team in Tampa Bay that historically is dominant at stopping the run. Then over the next six weeks, we saw a team that all they did was run the ball and extremely effectively, right? They did what worked. And then all of a sudden, they got away from that a little bit. Then now people are saying, man, you got to go back to what worked. I think the reason it worked is because game plan said that it worked. And so Kellen Moore has got to yeah. say, hey, Jerry Jones, I get it. Media, fans, I get it. Let me do my job and call a game plan that actually works based on the personnel that I have and who's healthy. All right, let's spin it forward, guys. So now the Cowboys are 10-4. and four. They can clinch the NFC least with a win versus Washington this weekend. And then another 10-4 and four team is the Chiefs, who's going to take on the Steelers. Acho, who's more likely to be upset? Is it the Chiefs or the Cowboys? It's the Cowboys. It's the Cowboys. And the reason why I think it's the Cowboys is, uh, number one, division games, you never know how they're going to go down. And I get it. Dak Prescott has a great record against the division. But let's not forget, two weeks ago in that game, Washington football team and the Cowboys – you saw the head coach, Mike McCarthy, talking about we're going to win it, I guarantee. Ron Rivera did not forget that. His team didn't forget that. The players on that team did not forget that comment. So they're going to come in with a vengeance. That's number one. Number two, though the Cowboys' defense is dominant, which we all understand. Michael Parsons, I think he should win MVP. Like, that's how good he's playing. Uh, Randy Gregory is back. Demarcus Lawrence is dominant. I get all that. But what I see on offense, bro, I see Ezekiel Elliott limping. I see Dak Prescott yeah. So saying he's healthy, not looking good. And I, and mind you, we can't even trust. Like, I get it. Everyone's saying he's healthy, he's healthy. They said that in the preseason he wasn't healthy, right? We cannot trust that the Dallas Cowboys are telling us the truth when they say that Dak Prescott is healthy. He does not look healthy. And we can look at the statistics from his first six games when he before the injury, the calf injury, and the last six games since the injury. And the touchdowns have been cut in half. Interceptions are increased. And so the issue is health. So with that being the case, 
If the defense can carry the team, sure, the Cowboys can win it. But at the end of the day, the Washington football team in this division game know their assignment. They're going to come in. They're going to play good defense. Going to try not to turn the ball over. Hopefully Heineke's healthy, and they could find a way to pull it off. It's the Chiefs. It's mm. the Chiefs. Now, let me say this. <laughs> let me say this, Molly, before mm. everybody jumps on mm. me. I <laughs> think the Kansas City Chiefs. Homer. Yup. Go ahead. Go the ahead. Kansas I know City, now you're on I'm the Steelers say, Molly, bandwagon. No, no. Listen, Molly, you can't. It's not you. It's not a bandwagon when you wore the colors. You don't I know, have you to be the bandwagon, them. right? You, story, you get to drive story, it. Story, but right. here's what, so, so here's what I'm gonna say. The Kansas City Chiefs are a better team than the Dallas Cowboys. The Kansas City T Chiefs as a whole are a better team than the Pittsburgh Steelers. If the Kansas City Chiefs have to play without Travis Kelsey and Tyreek Hill, the Kansas City Chiefs ain't the Kansas City Chiefs. Mm -hmm. When you think of the number of targets that these two individuals get, when you think of the number of, of the type of, of, of success that they have, right, of the, type of, of the type of production that they have, and then you look at everybody else, whether it's McCoy, Cole Hardman, or if it's Pringle, or whoever else there is to name, which you can't name because he's always throwing the ball to these two people, it tells you how important they are to the offense. When you look at the comeback against the Los Angeles Chargers, it was Tyreek Hill early on in the game, and then Travis Kelsey finished late. There were no other people that he was looking for, and that's Patrick Mahomes. They do not run the football, which is the way to beat the Pittsburgh Steelers defensively. And if the Pittsburgh Steelers can keep this game close, if the Pittsburgh Steelers can make this game grimy in single uh, possession mm. games, right? Ben Roethlisberger, Mike Tomlin, they are 26 games above 500. They like it chaotic. They like it nasty. They like it grungy. They like it dirty. What we can see, this stays close, but Roethlisberger makes some plays, is Mike Tomlin blowing kisses at the camera once again because he knew he stole a game from a team he wasn't supposed to win one against. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.